Fox, all week WeWork has been holding internal discussions over which financial rescue package to take in order to try to keep the company up and running. Executives debating whether to go with a $5 billion financing lifeline that would be led by J.P. Morgan or to sell a controlling stake to SoftBank. We are likely to know the fate of those two offers by Monday. My understanding is um, that actually the final submissions are going to be coming in today to uh, WeWork to, to, for them to analyze. I uh, want to show you what uh, CEO David uh, Solomon from Goldman Sachs uh, said about his firm's role in trying to lead or be one of the lead underwriters of the IPO. He was lead right to J.P. Morgan. Our job is not to be the rule maker for what the public markets accept or don't mm -hmm. accept in terms of governance, value, etc. It is our job to try to suggest over time what we think makes sense for investors and for markets, uh, for markets broadly. There's been a lot of focus on growth at all costs. I think the IPR market is pivoting and getting much more focused again on growth with a path to profitability. I think as there's been focus on growth at all costs, there's been a more lax approach than I personally think is appropriate around governance, and I think that's getting corrected a little bit. Barry Sternlich, this is... You're, you're in this business, or you're in this world uh, in a big way. I remember, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to out you on this, I think early on you were not necessarily a believer in the WeWork model, and then over time you became more of a believer in the WeWork model, and I want to understand where you are now. Uh, I'm a little conflicted on this, so I'll, I'll do what I talk about what I can. First of all, I think it's a business. Um, what, what's, the, what's your conflict, by the way, just so we understand? Um, we're... Um, Involved. You're involved in this situation. Yeah. So, but let Even me tell better. you. Uh, I, I think. Um, oh. I think. I think it's. Uh, I think it's a real company. I okay. think it's a real business. Um, there are other companies in the space. I'll be interviewing three CEOs at the Robinhood Investors Conference on Monday from Industrious, Convene, and, and Notel. Um, it's it's serving a, a a role in the real estate markets, which is. The, the, what, what Lou Ranieri did to the mortgage market, if you're a small company or a 50, you want to get 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet, you don't want to sign a 10-year deal. They're disintermediating the lease stream the way right. Lou disintermediated the mortgage market with your one year, two year, three year, took a 10-year, 30-year note and cut it into little pieces. So at scale, which we, uh, we were cat, that's an interesting business because right. any one company leaving, and they actually won't all leave, right? right? Even in a recession, because they're not, the reason you took that space was you didn't want to sign a 10 year deal. You weren't sure you were going to have 50 right. people or 500 people in 10 so years. So how much of this is the, But, yeah. you know, this company got a little off the rails and, um, and, and grew. It's so funny. It's just like a hotel business in the sense that, like, when I was running Starwood, our team would say, I need a hotel in Ethiopia. And I'd say, why? And they said, because we want people to be in our system. And I said, but we're not going to make any money in Ethiopia. That's the way Uber went internationally. They wanted to go to markets that, they, that are not at their core profitable markets for them. So I skipped that. I said, let them go to Ethiopia with someone else. I think WeWork's approach was, we'll capture that enterprise tenant, wherever Salesforce, wherever uh, Amazon, wherever these guys want to go, we'll be there for them. Right. That's not profitable for WeWork. Right. And so I think maybe it would have worked at the end game, but mm -hmm. it's very capital intensive. And I will say one thing about, we haven't talked about the economy in general, but that when tech hit real estate, all hell broke loose, right? These were, these valuations for these companies, right. this, and the model of yep. it's worth 20 billion, 40 billion, 47 billion, we know that we, it's foreign to us real estate right. guys. We like cash flow. We like growth. We like return on equity. Right. And we return our investors capital first. So this coming in, this tech wave hitting real estate tech, which is super hot vertical today, is really a crazy thing. And as distorted valuations have gone, these aren't software companies. Right. This is not so a software company. What, is, what could this company be worth? Um, that's, that's a fundamental question right now. It's obviously when? not $47 billion. <laughs> it's likely not 20 Let's say in the next year or two. Well, let's talk about something else in venture. In the old days, these companies, the, 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 the uh, VCs weren't able to, weren't, they had a rule. They weren't marking their up rounds. They weren't the right. same guy buying the next round. Today, it's commonplace. This is the smoking your own supply right. idea. It, well, you know, you had a, one of our friends who used to come on Squawk, but said it was a Ponzi scheme, right? right. In a way, it's semi, I mean, we don't mark, our, if we're the only guy buying our stock, is it really worth that? And people pointed out, SoftBank was the last investor at 20, 40, and 47, right? right? So... Is it really worth 47? I mean, they were marking their own book, obviously. So, I, it's, but, at, but it's meantime, worth, you had it's a viable, you, you had Goldman Sachs yeah. and J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley and so many other banks come to come to Adam Newman and say, "Look, we think that we can bring so this to market at wrong. 
60 billion dollars, 80 billion dollars yep. upwards. I believe one of the firms said upwards of 100 billion yep. billion dollars. Go Goldman so, was pretty aggressive. So what went wrong? Yeah. Uh, I, I think he got bad advice or, or he was able to get the governance situation was an easy way to derail an IPO. It was crazy, right. the, the, the governance stuff. And, and so if you're going to come out at a high valuation, at least, you know, I mean, you stack the deck in your favor, not against yourself. Right. I think, I think um, the scale of the losses and the cash flow needs, you never want to be the guy. You never want to have to get money. Right. You, you know. When you look at these two offers, and it may be that you're part of the J.P. Morgan uh, bid, it sounds like, potentially. And I, I say that only because you look at what J.P. Morgan's trying to do. They're trying to, and they should stick with WeWork to try to save them. I mean, there's no question we're talking about this, sort of the role of these different firms. I think there was enabling, an enabling factor in some of this, but at the same time, you can't cut and run either. So this is a client of theirs. They have other client money in it, so they, they have to well, try to put it in the best position possible. You know, the meantime, you have Masa on the other side, who you could either say has to rescue what, he, what he's done already, or, I mean, there's, as, as the visionary that he is, he, he I think, believes core, in the core mission well, I, and, I, and business model. Unlike some of the tech uh, darlings, uh, this company at its core makes money. There is, but you have to cut the overhead fairly significantly, uh -huh. and and because it was it was built for hyper growth, and and that is too capital intensive. So you have to build for steady growth, not hyper growth. And I think um, I, I think it's fairly obvious if you go through the financials, public financials, and the S one, you'll see that. Um, but I think I think I, I can't tell you what it's worth. Uh -huh. I'm not I'm not going to go there. I, I I will say that unlike some companies that are public that don't make money at the EBITDA line, if you cut the overhead here, this is a profitable business at some level. Right. And, and you've, got to re, you've got to reshape the company. And, and you know, maybe you go, like, companies like Industrious are in 10 markets or 20 markets. They're not in 60, 60 right. 600 locations in 180 countries right. or whatever it is. So I, I think it's interesting. Uh, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's a bellwether. I think for the, for the, if you're going to see it, the bubble in the world, because I look at what would cause the next recession, it's, it's definitely not real estate. We're relatively fine. We overbuild here and there a little bit. The housing market's coming along. It's looking great. The interest rates are helping the housing market. Multis are fine. Hotels are soft, but there's a lot of supply. Office is good. Right. And, uh, and, and, and venture is a mess. I mean, I think venture is, is really, you're going to look back and say, what were we thinking? Um, will Adam Newman, given all the collateralized shares and everything else, be able to m make it out ahead? He'll ahead be, of the game? Uh, I hope he'll be fine. I've known him since 2014. So I hope he I hope he comes out okay.